a project by Mel Benson Juan. The designer of the Franklin Gothic typeface was none other than Morris Fuller Benton. He was no stranger to the world of art and design. His father was Lynn Boyd Benton, inventor of the pantographic punch cutting machine and founder of American Type Founders, ATF for short. Morris Fuller Benton graduated from Cornell University with a degree in mechanical engineering. Then he joined the ATF as his father's assistant. He delved into the world of typography and began designing various typefaces. Later, he became the company's artistic director and the chief type designer from 1900 to 1937. Over the course of his career, Benton produced over 200 typefaces alongside his team at ATF. Some of his designs were original, such as Bank Gothic, some were recreational, such as Bondoni, and some included adding new weights to existing fonts. Benton was born in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 1872, and died in Morristown, New Jersey, 1948. As head of the ATF's typeface development, Benton designed various fonts. In his series of sans serif typefaces, first came the Globe Gothic, then Alternate Gothic, and finally, Franklin Gothic was cut in 1902, but only released as a font of metal type until 1905. The design of the Franklin Gothic typeface was inspired by the earlier sans serif typefaces designed in Germany, mainly the Accidents Grotesque series issued by the BTF. Benton named his font Franklin Gothic in honor of Benjamin Franklin, one of the founding fathers of America who also played a part in the world of design. Benjamin Franklin was a typesetter himself. He's also the one who published Poor Richard's Almanac. The term Gothic was considered a contemporary description in the early 20th century. However, in today's typography terminology, it's characterized as a classic period design. Initially, Benton designed only a Roman version of his typeface. Later, he added a condensed, extra condensed, and italic design, creating a small type family. As the years went by, the sans serif typefaces flourished but in the 1920s, they began to fade as they were overshadowed by the new interest of serif fonts, causing Franklin Gothic to fall dormant. In the 1950s, sans serif typefaces became popular again, and it was the International Typeface Corporation, ITC for short, that brought Franklin Gothic back to life. The problem with the Franklin Gothic typeface was that it restricted many graphic communicators due to its small type family. So in 1980, under license from ATF, ITC commissioned Victor Caruso with the task of creating four new weights for Franklin Gothic in Roman and in Italic. He drew book, medium, demi, and heavy. Over a decade later, David Berlow added 12 condensed and compressed designs to the typeface. The ITC Franklin Gothic type family still remained true to the original ATF Franklin Gothic, retaining the same design traits. But there were slight differences, such as an increase in the X height and an increase in the character width. There are a few characteristics that are particular to the Franklin Gothic typeface. The first would be that the character stroke weights have a much more obvious thick and thin contrast than most modern sans serif typefaces. This can be seen, for example, in the letter A. Another particularity of Franklin Gothic is how the terminals of a character stroke are cut at a 90 degree angle to the stroke rather than being parallel to the baseline. This can be seen for instance in the letter C. Another distinguishing aspect is the tail of the letter Q. It comes out from the bottom center of the letter form and curls to the right. As you can clearly see right here. ITC Franklin Gothic is most commonly used as a display face in various fields. It's the standard font used for newspapers and advertisements like Time Magazine and the New York Times. In film, Franklin Gothic is used for movies like The Dark Knight, Star Wars, and Rocky. In television, it's used for programs like The Nickelodeon Show and The Electric Company. It's also used in logos for shows like TNT, ESPN, and CBS Sports. It's also used for company logos like Bank of America and Showtimes. 
In music, it's used on album covers like Van Morrison's. In the world of fine arts, it's the official font for the Museum of Modern Art in New York. It's also used in board games, like on the letter tiles of the game Scrabble.